Okay, well, just in the in the interest of time, since we only have an hour and a half together, I think we can probably get the ball rolling. So to introduce myself for anybody that I don't know who's with us today, my name is Elizabeth Soubelet. I'm the co-founder of one of the first B Corps in France called Ma Bonne Etoile, we make the mark squeeze. And I'm also a board member at the association B Lab France. And I'm happy to be your, your, your animator guide for today, as we say in French here, the guide. So here we are, and we're gonna get things rolling because we're in the middle of still some special days about the SDGs. So we're gonna hear an introduction from our, our precious Nela about uh, climate and B Corps and SDGs. Take it away, Nela. Thank you, Elizabeth. And uh, hi, everyone. Very happy to be here, uh, especially uh, already inspired by the content, looking at the content of a program and knowing that people are coming here to talk about such an interesting topic. Um, but before we dive in, indeed, about talking about climate, uh, just making a short introduction as Elizabeth was pointing it out to a global campaign that we are launching, that we're still performing at the moment with the whole B Corp movement. Um, and it's called 70 Days or 17 Goals. Uh, and it is an ambitious SDG campaign that we have launched in order to showcase the mission, how the mission and the work of all our movement are actually contributing to that agenda. If you haven't seen the activation and highly encourage you to check out the websites for all the different uh, assets and elements that we have shared for the previous SDGs. We've really, we made this campaign with the aim of showcasing what role businesses can play in achieving those goals, but also all the different perspectives that we may not think intuitively of uh, when we talk about sustainable development goals. And before we go further again in details on that aspect, maybe some of you may not be so familiar with what we call SDTs or Sustainable Development Goals, which are some goals that have been defined uh, collaboratively and in an unprecedented, uh, unprecedented consultative uh, way by the United Nations in 2015. Um, so those goals have been defined to, def to really trying to refer and to um, to draw actually the vision of a society that will be more prosperous and equitable for us all and regenerative as well, of course. Um, so those SDGs are being considered as a North Star on the positive impact and how we try to shape society as an all. Those goals have been defined with governments being accountable for them, but we actually all have a role to play in achieving them. And this is what we're trying to show with this campaign, how the movement, the members of the B Corp movement are actually already playing a role uh, in achieving them because we actually all have an impact, whether we're measuring or not. And our aim is to bring more awareness, but also give some elements for actions to understand how can we consciously uh, dedicate and shape the impact that we're having to make it as positive as possible on society. And this is exactly what B Corps are doing. B Corps that maybe most of you are familiar with the concept, but companies that have embedded into the governance model uh, the uh, interest of all their stakeholders, including uh, social and environmental consideration, because we do consider environment as a really key important stakeholder. And today is the SDG number 13, um, that is called Climate Action that we're promoting. And very happy to be here with all of you to talk more in, in detail about it. And by Climate Action, my favorite one is actually the number 17, that is called Partnership to the Goal. Um, but it has a common point with the number 13, which is how it is encompassing and connected to all the other goals. So climate action is linked, of course, about uh, reducing and making, keeping control of our uh, emissions, our CO2 emissions, but also it's linked to all other aspects, uh, whether it's environmental, but also social aspects, because the way we interact with our environment is also linked to how much we live on society and how we develop society has consequences on people migration flows on how we uh, interact with our agriculture and food system on our energy and our consumption lives everything is all interconnected and on top of all those topics being connected the B Corp movement is also a true representation of how we're all interdependent so we do realize that we all have an impact because we live in a system on each other but we'll also take responsibility for that impact and take action to make sure that we can indeed build that uh, 
equitable and a shared prosperity society for all. So if you are curious about how businesses can actually contribute to the SDGs, highly encouraging you to either actually assess your contribution using one of our tools uh, called the SDG Action Manager that helps companies to assess their contribution to uh, all the different SDGs, or also to check out the resource center of a climate vehicle climate collective, um, which is helping you to take action and having concrete ways of implementing and improving your impact. And to just fi finish with on this note, um, before I leave it up to Elizabeth to take over and the talk more about that topic today. Um, just making sure that we understand all that before we take jump into taking action, we actually take the time to understand how we should take action and in which mindsets, and that we channel the energy that we have today for an effective positive impact. And that, in order to make that happen, I believe the really key element is to take a systemic approach understanding again that everything is interconnected and that we have a role and an impact on other elements of our system, whether we're talking about the environment directly, the biodiversity or other people uh, that are also sharing this, uh, this living system with us. So we actually think globally and think about the, uh, the high level picture, but we also act locally and we take responsibility for our action. And that applies to how we also consider climate action. So thank you for coming here, and I will pass it on to Elizabeth to talk a bit more um, about the topic today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Naila, for telling us more about the interaction between the B Corp movement and the Global Compacts and the UN's SDGs. So today we have a fantastic, fantastic um, time set up to be together and to talk about, obviously, some very, very, very serious things about the climate. Paul, can you please throw up my first slide? Um, to preface, basically uh, here in France, we have nothing major to add. The last report from the IPCC that we all saw this summer, nothing to add about the climate crisis that we are all in. What we would like, however, to contribute is something deeply rooted in the values of our nation. Everybody knows our famous motto, Liberté, Égalité, Fraternité. And we really believe that the climate crisis is something that we must face together. So facing it together, um, it makes me think very much about a famous quote from Dr. Martin Luther King that you may have also heard of, which is that we must learn to live together as brothers or perish as fools. And uh, that's kind of something that, that rings in my ears a lot. Um, he was obviously speaking in this case about segregation, but I think it applies very much also to the climate crisis. Um, if we're not doing this together, if we're just trying to do this on our own, we're not gonna, we're not gonna make it, we're not gonna manage. I don't know how many of you know Project Drawdown. It's a fantastic resource for climate solutions. Um, so their executive director, Jonathan Foley, wrote an article, there we go, uh, this summer, which was very interesting about neutrality. And he said something that, that really rang true for us in France, which is that without clear, robust, and scientifically sound goals, it's impossible to raise climate actions to the level Earth needs. And unfortunately today, many net zero commitments, which once seemed a good idea, have become distorted and abused and largely meaningless. And none of us want that. Um, when we began this journey together in the B Corp community several years ago, which we called Net Zero 2030, it was really about our planetary goal of net zero. And that's still the common goal. And that's still what we're all working towards. So today you will hear from different actors in France from both inside and outside the B Corp movement about how we envision climate action the science behind our position on the use of the term neutrality and what we have done and are planning to do together to contribute to our common goal of reaching net zero for earth. So without further ado, I will pass things on to our first speaker, Ilaria from the consulting agency Utopies who is also the coordinator of the French Climate Collective. Thank you, Elizabeth. So hi, everyone. Um, 
I'm very glad to give you an update on what's going on in France and share with you some of the community progress uh, on climate action. So as some of you may already know, um, we've been working a lot in trying to bring the ambition and the high standards uh, which are at the heart of this community within the current debate around um, corporate neutrality and the concept of net zero engagement. So we trying to bring back to its original meaning the term of net zero uh, used by climate scientists to describe an atmospheric balance. So not companies, not countries, but the world planet. Um, and we've all seen how the net zero concept has become so distorted that companies can today make grid climate pledge without actually reducing their, their emissions. Um, so what, what the community, what the B Corp uh, community gives to this concept is a frame, uh, asking companies to measure the carbon footprint, asking companies to define an action plan based on scientific targets. But what the recent frameworks in France are challenging is the, is the original concept of um, becoming net zero, of achieving carbon neutrality, of honing this title. And this is what we've been seeing with the net zero initiative that I will let Cesar, the expert, uh, present you uh, this framework, but also the ecological transition agency in France. Um, so it is complex. Um, the, this all neutrality concept is really complex nowadays in France and clearly under the spotlight. And recently, the French Climate and Resilience Act, which passed in July, um, brought even more confusion on the table. So the first version of this law prohibited any advertisement to claim that a product or service can be carbon neutral, while version that passed in July uh, gives space to claims based on certifications or European or French standards. Um, so what we've done in the B Lab side, uh, well, we first opened uh, the talk with all the B Corps uh, in the climate working group. Uh, we are trying to capture the feeling of the B Corp uh, facing uh, these definition revolutions, I, I, if I can say. Um, and we try to translate in a B Corp language the scientific uh, concepts working on the corporate communication. But not only what we want to try to do is also working on the effort between behind the title, behind the claim, and this is the climate strategy. Um, now, today in France, almost 30 companies uh, signed the net zero 2030, a part of it, have a carbon footprint, and a part of it have already published uh, an action plan. Um, and what we want to do now is to, uh, and I take this opportunity to announce it, we'll launch a collective action which is something that we know works very well within the community. Uh, thanks to one um, collective action, uh, 10 small companies have now their first carbon footprint. And I'd like to thank you to Balu for their advisory in this uh, collective action. Now, what we want to do is to focus on the strategy. So in the first pillars of the uh, neutrality uh, sheen, working really on the action. And we have the chance that to this year, um, the uh, ADEM, which is, as I told you before, the Ecological Transition Agency in France in cooperation with the CDP, um, published the first ever framework that gives a frame to the process of developing a climate strategy. We had uh, methodology to estimate carbon footprints. We have methodology to fix science-based targets, but we didn't have anything that bring this all together, set the steps, gives tools, uh, and ensure that the climate strategy is ambitious enough. Uh, so we'll launch this um, collective action. Uh, it's open. I mean, if any 
French company is interested to take part. Uh, if any consulting group trained to the methodology uh, is interested, well, let us know. And we hope that this could be uh, an example. This could be something that can be reproduced within other, other countries because the methodology is international. It is part of the United Nations climate agenda. So I guess uh, this would be very interesting. So if someone has any doubt questions, do not hesitate to reach us out. Um, and in the last slide, what it's really interesting is that this methodology finally breaks the common classic static approach of measuring, reducing as accepting. We're finally challenging the overall strategy because if we start from a carbon footprint and try to reduce some part of it, we never challenge the vision itself. We never challenge the business model, model itself. And this is what we do within ACT. We really work on the governance. We work on the human resources engaged on the carbon, low carbon transition management. And um, I hope this will interest some of uh, the French B Corps, some of the international B Corps. Um, and I'm sure it will really set the basis for uh, great examples of what uh, an ambitious strategy is um, without touching the flame of neutrality. We will never get uh, to that. We will really focus on the first pillar uh, of the net zero initiative that César will present you very soon. Um, and I will let uh, Pascal talk about the communication. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ilaria. Thank you, Elizabeth, for this introduction. Um, thank you, Ilaria, for, for mentioning that uh, um, climate action is obviously about what we do, <laughs> uh, but also how we tell what we do and how we talk about neutrality. Uh, you all know that um, carbon issues or carbon neutral issues are the new communication gold. Almost everyone claims to be or pledges, pledges to become carbon neutral, uh, net zero, or even climate uh, positive. Even Google, <laughs> the giant Google claims that is uh, carbon neutral uh, since uh, 2007. So does it still mean something? And as B Corps, as conscious companies, how not to add to the confusion, how not to add to the current, what we can talk now, uh, when net zero washing and how do we add um, understanding, education, and how uh, do we contribute to make complexity accessible? So um, we believe that maybe um, old school advertising uh, simply cannot tackle these new challenges and we have to invent together new ways of communicating uh, these complex uh, issues. But what we wanted to mention today, if you, you don't uh, have these uh, this, uh, details yet, is that in France, we have the chance to have an existing set of rules, a framework we can rely on. Um, Ilaria uh, mentioned it. Uh, the issue now is, is it enough? Uh, do we have to go further? Well, the debate is entirely open uh, for the upcoming month, and we will be happy to have these uh, discussions with, uh, with you. But just a quick reminder of the, the current uh, legal rules regarding uh, carbon neutral uh, claims, uh, because as uh, it was said that uh, we, we first, the, the, the law uh, project was just banning any claim regarding carbon neutral. Now we are not in the banning of carbon neutral, but in the, in the fact to, 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 to precise in what condition it can be used, and it can be used uh, with uh, making accessible um, your uh, reportings, uh, your strategy in, the, in that area. Uh, you see in the, in the slide the exact words of the, of the, of the new article of Code de l'Environnement. And also uh, the modalities of, of, uh, of setting. Uh, so now we have a concrete, uh, let's say, uh, support uh, helping um, 
reducing maybe some net zero washing, but it still remains complex uh, to communicate around these issues considering these new, these new rules. So uh, maybe uh, we can discuss about that uh, in our further um, uh, groups and, and, and climate action uh, uh, meetings. And just to remind you, uh, because I'm a member of uh, the French jury of uh, ethical advertising, remind you that there are a set of uh, ethical uh, deontological rules that need to be uh, that need to be uh, let's say re respected uh, and i wanted just to underline the dispositive complex the complex uh, devices because carbon neutral issues are, are, are depending on that specific point uh, paul if you can uh, move to the to the next slide um, also saying that uh, we have to include in any communication to the public uh, some uh, educational materials, some, um, some documentation about the, 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 the carbon neutrality strategy, etc. Um, so this means that when you are carbon neutral on, on an advertising or something like that, it has to go much further in the way we communicate about neutrality. And we believe that we have to invent again new ways of, uh, of communicating uh, uh, this. I'm going to put in the chat the link uh, of uh, this, uh, this, uh, this text. And if you have any question about it, it was just a quick reminder of the set of existing rules. And obviously, the, the, as I said, it's how we contribute to make them uh, evolve as uh, B Corps and conscious uh, companies. And I'd, I'd like to add, Pascal, I'm sorry, I didn't get to give your full intro, um, that the, um, so the um, uh, D, French uh, Agency for Ethical Advertising has existed since 1935. So it was quite something something that came quite early to France and um, their, their set of guidelines about sustainability and communication are really excellent. Um, I'm not entirely sure what exactly exists in other countries that's comparable, but I've often used it in, in my own business um, and they're really well, really well thought out um, and very clear for anybody who works in marketing or communication. And we know that this is an area where I think that in our community as B Corps, uh, we could probably be a, even even greater even greater leaders it's it's a tough thing to capture through the bia but it's also especially important thank you elizabeth okay so next up we are going to hear from two b corps who are going to share a little bit about their experience their climate strategy and how they've lived all these things and the first person we'll hear from we're going to hear from by video he couldn't be with us today but he sent us uh, his testimonial is from Florian, who is the uh, sustainability manager for Picture Organic Clothing. Hi, everybody. I'm Flo from Picture. Thanks a lot for the invitation. Unfortunately, I couldn't join today, but I wanted to record this small video to share with you our vision at Picture when it comes to the role of companies in the fight against climate change. Uh, so first of all, a few words about us. We are a French textile brand. We are making clothing for snowboarding, skiing, surfing, and the outdoors. Um, we've been a B Corp certified company uh, for almost two years now. So let's say that we are a kind of very, very, very small Patagonia more or less. Um, so that was just for a, a short introduction. Now I'm going to talk more about climate actions, just to explain what we do and how we try to listen as much as possible to experts, climate scientists, IPCC scientists, energy engineers, specialized consulting companies, think tanks, etc. Based on what they say, based on their conclusions, recommendations, publications, we have identified five big pillars for a clean, realistic, and uh, challenging climate strategy, climate strategy sorry, at a global scale, but that we can also implement at our scale, which makes this strategy very interesting. 
So those pillars are carbon accounting, energy transition, so moving away from oil, coal, natural gas, so fossil fuels, and push for low carbon energies. Pillar number three, sobriety. It means reducing the energy need um, because we need to understand that a proper energy transition will never be achieved if we don't reduce the energy need in the same time. So this sobriety pillar is systemic, very political, and will definitely question our economic model. So synonym of sobriety can be degrowth or postgrowth, for example. Pillar number four, increasing the capacity of natural carbon sinks. And the last one is about technologies to capture carbon. So that's a global roadmap for reaching carbon neutrality at the world scale. What I try to do as picture is to implement them for our own climate strategy. And actually that would work as well for any kind of company, for also a state, for a city, for example. Uh, so that's what I clearly like about that vision. It's not ours. I'm not an expert. We are just a textile brand trying to improve what we do. So I guess the least we can do, actually, is to listen to experts and implement what they say, but at our scale. Well, there is just the last pillar, carbon technologies that that does not really fit with our activity. Also because at a global scale, I don't really trust in a miracle from technologies. So of course, we will stay aware of innovations like, for example, making polyester from CO2. But um, yeah, it's not really part of our strategy and I don't want to take west, yeah, to take too much time about that. Um, all right. so. Let's move forward. First pillar, carbon accounting. Uh, we did a carbon footprint with Quantis last year, and now we work with SWIP, uh, which is a new B Corp uh, certified company, by the way. So understanding and mapping our emissions, tracking the carbon where it's located, measuring what we can reduce, what kind of actions can be positive or negative carbon-wise. All in all, SWIP is your um, tool for measuring, reducing, contributing, and act for climate. So, um, also, just so you know, picture is 15,000 uh, tons of CO2, uh, so in 2019, so two years ago, it was that number. 84% of this impact, carbon impact, is located for the manufacturing of our products. So, a textile supply chain made of raw materials extraction, spinning, waving, dyeing, finishing, assembling. Transportation is only 4% of our impact, which is quite counterintuitive because we are distributed in 40 countries, but that's the, the reality of our impact. And it makes a perfect transition to talk now about pillar number two, energy transition. So moving away, moving away from fossil fuels, especially when it comes to our supply chains, our main ones, Turkey and Taiwan. In Turkey, we make organic cotton products, so lifestyle products. And in Taiwan, we make our uh, auto wear, technical jackets, technical pants uh, made of recycled polyester. What we need to understand that's very important in the textile industry. When it comes to carbon emissions, when it comes to energy transition, it's it should be all about electricity and heat creation. Forget about materials, forget about packaging, forget about, I mean, not forget about them, but we need to change the, the way we work on serious topic, very serious ones, instead of pushing too much for the classic topics of this industry. So yeah, I clearly say that it's all about machines, spinning, waving, dying machines that you need to power with electricity. The origin of the electricity will greatly influence the carbon intensity of the finished product. 
simply because at the world scale, the production of electricity is the uh, number one cause of greenhouse gases emissions. So, so let's, uh, I, I have an example, for example, in Turkey, um, our spinning and knitting factory is now using solar panels to produce some of their energy need, which all of them to move away a little bit from the Turkish grid, which is quite carbon intensive. So that's, that's a good move actually, uh, in Turkey. Um, and it requires a lot of collaboration. We need to collaborate with other brands that are part of our supply chains. Um, we need to collaborate with them because they are more influent than picture, they are bigger, they have more money. So that's that's a crucial topic. Uh, also targeting low, con low carbon countries such as Portugal, for example. So when you can simply put production in a country where the electricity is already low carbon, that sounds like a, like a very good plan. Um, okay, pillar number three, sobriety now. Reducing their energy need. Um, so what could we do about that? Uh, first of all, I think it's important to say that uh, we've been working with repair centers for a very long time now to increase the durability of our products. When you don't need to buy new and that you can repair, make your products last longer, you are definitely reducing your energy need. You don't need to buy new. Um, so that's a good point. And now we also have a lifetime repair warranty for technical products. Uh, what else? Uh, we will very likely launch a rental offer this winter. So the winter to come, 21-22, alongside with a refurbished and second-hand um, collection of products. Um, also, one of our main challenges is to maybe reduce a little bit the size of our collection, the number of references and to have more carryover products from one season to another, being a kind of unfashionable. Um, and of course, the question of growth is crucial. This is definitely part of our ongoing discussion. Even if we are a small brand with a lot of potential, with a lot of demand, and a will to do things better than others, I mean, not in a conventional way, uh, we need to address the, the topic of economic growth uh, because we know that decoupling environmental pressures and economic growth is not possible. So that's a very big question. Uh, I don't have a, a proper answer for you guys now, but um, and also I'm not the pilot of the brand. I'm just, let's say, just the sustainability manager, but... Um, yeah, what I try to push for is organic growth. That seems okay to me. Like, like small and slow is beautiful in a way, you know, uh, rather than fast growth led by big marketing campaigns and sales objectives. It's not really my thing. So at Picture, we are more or less in the middle of those two visions. And yeah, it's a clearly challenging topic. And discussions are still uh, are still ongoing. Also, part of this sobriety pillar, the topic of four work days per week. We are exploring this. Uh, also, exploring stuff like the gross national happiness, like in Bhutan, for example. It's like an accounting based on several indicators: carbon, quality of life, biodiversity, economy. Well, we could talk forever about that, but. Uh, Let's move forward with the last pillar, our contribution to carbon neutrality and the way we can make increase the, nat the capacity of natural carbon sinks to capture carbon. So clearly I'm in phase with the Net Zero Initiative and with LADEM. So I'm not going to talk that much about that. Cesar, uh, the carbon cut will do it much better than me. Um, so, well, with SWIP, 
So the software that we use for uh, measuring, reducing, contributing, we have a catalog for low carbon projects that we can just select. Uh, so in 2022, like next year, we will start in to invest. Uh, the budget is still to be defined. Uh, the price that we will give to carbon uh, as well. But yeah, it's uh, it's ongoing. Um, also, we've just started to work with l'ONF. So l'Office National des Forêts, our French National Forest Office, uh, on a forest project in Haute-Savoie. Um, um, the story is about a forest greatly affected three years ago by a storm uh, with such a great intensity in the middle of the night that it's clearly due to, to climate change. So, well, um, what I'm saying, it's, it's, it's rather a global strategy than something already achieved. So this, this, this global plan. So it's, it's a journey. Some actions are ongoing. Some are very complicated. Some are quite done in a way. Some are yet to be discussed. Um, but at least we know we are going into the right direction thanks to all of those recommendations and scientific conclusions. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, we have the recertification in 2022, next year. We'll see. Maybe not reaching 150 like Patagonia. Not yet, but uh, at least trying to get closer. Well, uh, thanks for the invitation. Uh, thanks a lot and uh, and see you guys very soon. Ciao, ciao, bye. Merci. Um, <laughs> Nathalie Découverte to tell us about their, their climate strategy. Climate change. So our, um, uh, so I was saying it's challenging for us and not that easy, but uh, we base our climate strategy on three pillars, uh, carbon accounting, carbon reduction, that's classic, and carbon contribution, but not carbon offsetting. And you will know more about it um, by Carbon Catcher, Catcher that is going to present to you uh, the Net Zero Initiative. We are we joined the Net Zero Initiative uh, this year, early this year. So how we do it? Uh, we have been calculating our carbon footprint since 2008. Uh, scope one, two, and three. You're familiar with this. Um, word, uh, but we never calculate a product, it's very new, and since 2016 we have been, uh, we set our uh, annual emissions reduction targets, and one part of the, of the remuneration of our board of directors uh, is related to the shipment of these objectives, this tar reduction target. We also participate to the ACT initiative, and uh, learned, uh, we learned a lot. So I definitely recommend to you to, to participate. And we have implemented since then a number of actions to reduce our emissions, but mainly in our energy consumption, the kind of electricity or energy we consume and the transport of our products. So we are 100% renewable electricity, 100% biogas in our facilities. But as you can imagine, uh, this is not enough. And uh, so this year we launched a project with Carbon Catch uh, to calculate the carbon footprint of all our products. We have a lot of a lot of products and uh, to set, uh, set up uh, reduction targets to 2030 and 2050. And the first results, we just have the first results last week uh, show us without any surprise that about 70% of our impact comes from our products and that we may uh, reduce or divide our carbon footprint impact by four to seven um, uh, to uh, 2050. So it's very, very challenging uh, objective target. Uh, and given these results, it, it is impossible to believe that a classic reduction and offsetting a strategy is possible or profitable uh, for us. For example, uh, we estimate that offsetting 100% of our emissions 
uh, with projects that match our values uh, would cost us uh, around 2 million euros per year. So the questions are, uh, it's better to invest in offsetting and carbon offsetting, or it's better to invest to transform our business model uh, to um, achieve this ambitious goal. So that's why we joined the Net Zero Initiative, trying to find answers. And we also uh, apply a uh, true approach uh, to, to, to do this. Uh, there is the classic one. So through the products it could design, uh, but for sure that would need enough if we want to divide our carbon footprint by four to 2050 or more. So we have the other approach that is more innovative, uh, but is crucial and is essential is, and the, the second approach is uh, transforming our business model. And we do it uh, through two, the integration of two principles. Uh, the first one is the circular economy, the, the circular economy principles through uh, uh, selling second-hand products, also proposing repairing uh, services to our clients and working with our suppliers to extend the life uh, span of our products. And the second approach is to uh, working on the functional economy. So we are also launching products to um, develop more services more than products um, proposed to our clients, uh, activities or educational programs to help them. So all of this is really new. Uh, we are working in our roadmaps, uh, but that, that we are conscious that it's the only way that we can achieve this target and we cannot do it alone. So we work with our suppliers and we work with experts that know uh, a lot about these subjects. Um, that's what we want to share with you, and uh, if you have any questions, uh, I'll be glad to try to answer to you. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra. Yes, please put any questions that you may have in the chat, and we'll keep them all for the end of the session. We'll have a question and answer session. That was very interesting. It is now time to hear from the expert that we have invited, who is Cesar Dugas. Uh, from the firm Carbon4, who is head of neutrality. Cesar, are you with us? Yes, I think so. <laughs> yes, can, can you hear, hear me? Yes. All right. It's been a rough day. For oh, that. Uh, I'm so sorry uh, for, uh, I, I uh, really uh, can understand how uh, confusing it can be to have like some um, direct, some live uh, problems like that. So I'm really, really sorry not to have. Um, heard um, Florian, but uh, I hope the, the video is gonna be available just after. You, can you hear me well? Can you confirm that you can hear me well? And do you see me? Yeah, okay, great. Well, hello everyone. Uh, I'm really happy to be here. Thank you so much for the invitation. <clears throat> so yeah, I think I'm here. Uh, Elizabeth, Elizabeth, do you confirm that I'm here to give a bit more insight on, well, what carbon neutrality is and how could uh, companies start uh, acting towards uh, reliable, robust, transparent neutrality? Is that the, exactly the yes? Okay. Yes, exactly. This is really our day from France to share with the rest of our European network what's going on here because it's a little bit different than in some other places. All right, perfect. Um, how long do I have? Like twenty minutes is is good. Uh, twenty minutes is great. You even can take twenty five if you need to. Great. And uh, maybe uh, there, there are some questions and answers afterwards, right? Because I, I can really yes. uh, answer any questions in the course of my presentation. So please don't hesitate to, uh, to raise your hands, participate on the chat or, and so on. Um, yes, we will have time. Okay, great. So for those who do not know Carbon4, so Carbon4 carbon in French, Carbon4 is uh, a French leading consulting company specialized in climate change. So we, uh, I like to say that we are not just a climate consultancy, but we also love to develop new methodologies and to publish lots of things because we think it's really important to, uh, let's say, contribute to the, to the national and, and collective debate on the climate. And we love to, 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 to share our expertise to, uh, to the civil society and so on. So, one of the one one of the outcomes of that is that 
Carbon4 has been working on a very new way of looking at carbon neutrality for private companies. And this new way of thinking carbon neutrality and thinking net zero is called net zero initiative. So I personally am the, uh, the head of this project um, and I would like to tell you a bit more about it. So I'll, I'll try to share my screen right away. Okay. One, just 30 seconds because I, I need to make, um, hmm. I hope everyone's going uh, great. Uh, I'm trying to, uh, to, to, to gain some time here. Okay. Okay, it's gonna be almost over, I promise. So share screen, and I hope you can see my screen right now. Perfect. Yeah, great. All right, so um, so I'd like to, to tell you a bit about Net Zero Initiative. Maybe you have, you have heard of it. If you have not, it's really no problem because I will start from the beginning. Um, so we've been, so Carbon4, the, the company has been around for maybe 13 years now. So we exist since 2007. Um, our co-founder is the, uh, the one who created the carbon footprint assessment approach in France called the Bilan Carbon. So, um, and um, and the, the Net Zero Initiative, which is a project, exists since 2018. So why 2018? Uh, it's because it was a time where carbon neutrality claims and net zero claims started to be more and more um, well around and more and more claimed by lots of companies. And what we what we saw at the time was that lots of these claims were complete greenwashing and complete bullshit. And that, as was said just before, lots of companies claim to already be carbon neutral or already be net zero without having a clear plan on reducing their emissions and translating their business models into good low carbon business models. So we, we thought a bit and we decided to, to really um, focus on this question of what is carbon neutrality for a company and what should it be? How, what would be the questions that a company should ask itself to have a great climate plan that is radical and ambitious and completely aligned with climate science. So we have worked with various people. We have had the chance to work with uh, uh, companies first uh, that are our sponsors. So uh, Sandra uh, that just um, uh, gave the speech just before me is part of the game with Nature et Découverte. But we also have various companies from various sectors and we all also had the chance to be um, supported by the French Ministry of uh, Ecological Transition and also the French uh, Environment Agency, ADEM. And along with this, uh, this well, business side, we also have an expert size, a side, and we have the chance to work with uh, fascinating people from all over the world that help us define the best framework uh, that could be imagined. So we have people from the Oxford Uni University, the WRI, uh, people from uh, the New Climate Institute in Germany, Carbon Market Watch in Belgium, um, Climate Analytics in London. Uh, we have uh, the UNFCCC also. So all these people are, of course, not completely, uh, not necessarily uh, embracing everything we say, but they help us uh, answer uh, the right questions, actually. So I can give you a bit of a presentation of what the outcome of that work was and what we actually decided to, uh, to, to, to advise to companies in terms of carbon neutrality. So what we did was starting with the very starting point, which is climate science, okay? So our very first um, step was to wonder, okay, so there are various net zeros around the world, but there is just one net zero definition that is, that is compatible with climate science. And this net zero definition is the definition of global net zero, okay? So the IPCC in 2018 um, published the uh, special report for 1.5 degrees. 
and they clearly stated that carbon neutrality is the moment uh, where your emissions uh, at a global scale are balanced by the sinks at a global scale. So neut the neutrality goal is basically, sorry, is basically one condition to stabilize the temperature. So it's like, you can see here that I have a small drawing. It's, it's supposed to represent a bathtub. So the atmosphere is some kind of a bathtub, okay? So the, the amount of water is basically the amount of CO2 that we all that we have in the atmosphere. The more CO2, the more global warming. And so the only chance you have to stop the catastrophe of uh, making your bathtub overflow is to balance this, the tap, which are the emissions, and the sink, which are the, the, the well, carbon sinks, like forests or uh, soils. So there is something, it's something really important to understand is that we should act on two different levers to get to carbon neutrality, reduce emissions and develop carbon sinks in parallel. So this is a very radical ambition. It requires radical transformations on every sector. You can see here that the only way to reach carbon neutrality is to really, really rapidly cut emissions everywhere and in parallel to develop carbon sink, sinks. So the IPCC is really clear about that. We cannot reach carbon neutrality without drastically reduce our emissions. So this is quite clear from climate science. And then the question uh, the private sector is desperate to ask is that how should they contribute to this collective goal? What are the company's role towards this collective goal? So this is where we start having an answer, which is the net zero initiative answer on this. And our answer is that if we consider that the, the top priority is to both reduce global emissions and develop carbon sinks, then a company can do three things. The first thing it should do, of course, it's, it's the most important, is to reduce their own emissions. Okay. So it's basically managing the company's carbon footprint. It, this is the most important thing to do. But there is a second thing a company can do to contribute to reducing global emissions is to what we call avoid emissions, which are helping reduce, well, el helping others, wherever they are, reduce their emissions. We, we'll, we will see later um, what it means. And then there is a third and last way for a company to contribute to global net zero is to contribute to the development of carbon sinks. So to help enlarge the sink. So here you can see that we have three distinct and independent pillars. Okay, there is no need to net, to add or subtract anything. We just have three indicators that need to be managed in parallel. So if we start diving into each of the three pillars, A, B, and C, here is what you get. Uh, so this is just uh, a bit more detail on the previous slide. So what do you have on pillar A? As I said, you have what you do on reducing our direct emissions, which is called scope one, but also what you do to reduce indirect emissions, which is called scope two and three. So basically this is very well known. This is managing and reducing your carbon footprint. As for pillar B, you have different ways to do it. Either you say that you want to contribute to decarbonizing your customers, which means that you need to, to sell low carbon products that will uh, replace more carbon intensive solutions uh, in your client's home or, or life. But you can also um, decide to pay for developing carbon projects that will finance uh, that will reduce or avoid uh, emissions. This is called basically offsetting, but uh, we, we prefer to call it contribution because we think it's much more correct to say that this is a financial contribution to reducing others' emissions than something that helps you be magically carbon neutral. And thirdly, for the pillar C uh, companies' contribution to carbon sinks development, you have either uh, the chance to have direct and indirect removals inside of your value chain that you will have to develop. If you are, for example, in the forestry sector or agricultural sector, you have lots of carbon sinks 
in your value chain that you need to, to, to develop. But you can also decide to act outside of your value chain through the financing of removals projects. So if we start uh, looking at this matrix, that's what we call the, this dashboard, the Nether Initiative matrix, we can see that there are already very well-known uh, objects here, okay? The first very well-known object that you might know already is what you call the decarbonization strategy. So basically, it, it's, it lets you um, make a carbon footprint assessment thanks to the greenhouse gas protocol or the ISO um, ca carbon calculation. It invites you to set a science-based target on this to, to reduce your direct and indirect emissions. And as uh, Ilaria said just before, there is also ACT here uh, by CDP and ADEM that helps you understand and act toward your actual decarbonization. So everything here is at the service of your pillar A, which is reduce your emissions. And, and I have to repeat it, it's the absolute priority, okay? You need to decarbonize, we all need to decarbonize. There is no way we can use any offsets or magical solutions. It's just pure decarbonization that's at stake here. Then let's continue. There is so decarbonization strategy. Then here you have uh, a role here that I did not call offsetting, but I, that I called financial contribution. Because here is in, in no, no, it's no less than purchasing carbon credits and accelerating the transition. So here we count uh, everything the company does to support reduction or avoidance or removal projects outside of its value, its value chain. And we shift from offsetting to contribution because there is no zero here. There is no offsetting, there is no netting. There is just uh, a display of your financial contribution to accelerating the movement. Let's continue. Here you have your removals inside the value chain. And here the WRI and the GAG protocol help us calculate what you do and how you, how you have to, ha to act here. And then to finish here, you have this last category, which is how you help as a company, your clients decarbonize, thanks to your company's low carbon solution. And this is very important because here you can see that in order to be fully aligned with the net zero uh, principle, the global net zero goal, your company also needs to uh, re maybe reinvent itself and ask itself the question of, do my products and services contribute to a net zero world, actually? Do I contribute, thanks to my products and services, to let my clients reduce their emissions? Or do I just contribute to increasing the total emissions of the, of the world? So this is really a key question that is really close to, to strategy, actually. It's really uh, a, a, a sense of, strate of uh, corporate strategy here. So I, I could tell you about the next steps. Um, so just for your information, we are currently starting a third season of work with Net Zero Initiative with all the, the companies I, I told you before and all the experts I told you before. And uh, we continue because we have lots of work to do because uh, there, is, there are still a lot of methodological work to, to, be, to be done. Not for Pillar A because almost everything has already been said. We already have the carbon footprint assessments uh, methodologies. We already have the SVT uh, initiative and we already have ACT that gives you uh, a score for your decarbonization. So the work needs to be done on pillar B uh, for first, uh, and precisely on how to calculate your avoided emissions. You might have, as a company, wanted to calculate your avoided emissions, and you might know that it's really, really difficult to have a robust and transparent methodology. So what we are trying to do this year is to try to give some rules on three sectors to see how we can rightly calculate them. And we also want to, to help companies set themselves a target 
on their contribution to decarbonization of other people. And for Pillar C, it's basically the same. We would like to set some rules to calculate your sinks inside your value chain and also set a target for the company's contributions to removal, which, are, which is the question of every year, how much uh, carbon sinks do I have to develop to be compatible with the Paris Agreement? And so I, I'm about to finish here. So what I can say is that D-Lab is more than welcome to contribute to our, to our work because you are a lab, you, you think, and you have great ideas. So uh, we have to find some opportunities to, to contribute together. As for companies that are D Corp, you can start right now to try to adopt a net zero initiative compliant climate, climate strategy and ask yourself the question of, uh, do I have a decarbonization plan? Do I have a contribution plan? Do I develop carbon sinks inside my value chain? And do I sell carbon, uh, do I sell solutions that are decarbonizing my clients? So everything, all these questions, you can already uh, ask themselves for you. And you can be helped with uh, the Net Zero Initiative Framework, which is a document that is available online that was published one year ago, and um, that could help you on all of these questions about carbon neutrality. Thank you. Thank you so much, Cesar. That was fantastic. I don't know how many people in our audience had already heard of the Net Zero Initiative. Uh, we definitely knew it in our working group, and it had a huge effect on us when we, when we heard about it. Um, but I hope that everyone else, particularly from outside of France, who'd never heard of it, uh, we'll look into it deeper and, and learn about how, how it works more specifically. Everything exists in French and in English, I know, so yep. it, it works really well. Yep. Um, we're gonna, so here we've hit the question and answer portion of our program. Please feel free to write any questions that you have in the chat. And everyone who's here, Cesar, Sandra, Ilaria, Pascal, will answer them. I'm sure that someone has a question. No one has a question. I will ask a question. Uh, Elizabeth, uh, I asked one uh, on the chat. Uh, that was right after uh, Sandra talked about what they were doing at uh, Nature Découverte. Um, Wait, so go ahead and ask it again. So we're about to be part of this uh, new initiative within B Corp uh, to, uh, to assess the uh, ACT methodology. And uh, my concern was to understand how this methodology helps the company to uh, prioritize and define its, its climate strategy. Uh, example, does it provide insights on uh, reducing emissions when you take uh, various actions, uh, maybe the budget you need to launch them, uh, or even does it take into account the fact that uh, uh, impacting the comfort of employees regarding certain actions, it may uh, help us to convince our companies to put the budget on it. Uh, several questions in one, but uh, the general idea is to better understand how it drives the company strategy. Thanks in advance. Okay, can you hear me? Hello, Thomas. Um, there are two initiatives uh, from ACT. There is ACT uh, as, a, as a low carbon transition. That one is what we uh, tried. And there is a new one that is was launched this year. And uh, so on your question, um, the initiative access in low carbon transition that helps you to, to, the, to create your new strat climate strategy. I don't think so. The, the, the ACT initiative will help you to identify uh, what you are not doing um, and then you have to do it, but know how you have to do it. If you want to know how to do it, um, I think it's better you try the new initiative that was launched this year. Uh, why? Because the assessment of carbon transition is like a core for your carbon strategy and that will give you a score about your carbon strategy. So if you have a board of directors and you discuss about the climate change and the, your targets in the board of directors, you will have uh, points of that, but that will 
help you to know how to do it or that will help you to know what are the actions that you have to put in place to reduce your carbon footprint according to the industry or the kind of activity you have no but it's more a very large way what are you doing why you you are not doing um but why that help help us because uh about uh, after we did this work uh, in uh, we had to calculate the carbon footprint of our products to do the act initiative because if not it's about 40 percent of the score of the act initiative is related to the products so we did this estimation about the carbon footprint of our products and we show it to the board of directors and they were surprised and they didn't understood and, and, and have many questions so that helped us to tell them that we have to work on this subject and we have the budget to work with carbon catch uh, carbon four to calculate the carbon footprint of our products and targets uh, and set up uh, targets to 2030 so we just help you to know what's wrong in your strategy uh, but it will won't give you the answers yeah hope i answered the question <laughs> and if i can add something um as uh, sandra said like act initiative is an initiative uh launched by adem and the cdp uh, and they developed two methodology one that is older uh which is the uh, act assessment so the evaluations of a strategy this is really for companies that have a mature strategy and they want to test if it is ambitious or not uh, and this is something and you can get some insights from the evaluation but this is one part the other part is act step by step which is the new one the, the one sandra was talking about which really brings you from your carbon footprint which is um, which is one of the uh, requirements to start uh, the methodologies. You have to arrive with your carbon footprint and full knowledge of what's inside, where your impacts are. And starting from there, the methodology brings you step by step to the, uh, well, from the definitions of a long term vision to the constructions of strategic pillars to uh, the analysis risk and opportunities for the company, like business uh, risk and opportunities for the company faces the low carbon transition and to the definitions of a plan, an ambitious climate action, action plan. So I guess this answer a, a bit to your question, but to, uh, I, I, I agree with Sandra, the methodology will not tell you do this and that, but it will give you all the tools to get to the right choice and with the right criteria to know if it is ambitious or not. And you'll have um, a tool, a really strategic tool that will let you know step by step what is the, the ambition that you, that you target, what, what is the ambition that you uh, achieved, and so all the potentials access to uh, to do better. I mean, and this is really what it, it's interesting. It's not static. It's not once you get to your action plan, it's over, but it's really a circular and dynamic process where you can improve and you can like have a trace, uh, really follow your improvement in a transparent and good way. I can't wait to start doing it all together. <laughs> Camila, from, Camila has a question. Yes, Camila. I do indeed. My question goes to Cesar. Uh, in terms of the framework to have a uh, right um, methodology to, to calculate the pillar B and C, but especially B, um, I didn't understand quite uh, which were the sectors they were focusing in into the group work now from the neutrality group, which are the sectors they are developing this methodology to. And the second question is, is there a timeline already ambition for this? And um, what is the goal of the movement of the neutrality, if it is to make it an open source tool, or if it stays in the framework of a consultancy? 
thanks for the question. <clears throat> so uh, yeah, I didn't quite, um, I, I didn't give the names of the sectors actually. So the sectors are um, transport, um, buildings and energy production. So for each of these three sectors, our purpose is to, uh, to well, to, to propose some, um, some rules uh, to calculate baselines uh, and to, to give some rules to say for, let's say, five to seven very famous types of solutions on each of, three sec of the three sectors. For example, I don't know, um, insulation, in home insulation for buildings or um, low carbon mobility like bikes for the tr transport transportation sector to give some rules to how to calculate over the emissions, how to create the, the baseline and um, and how maybe if we can manage to do it, uh, how to to set a target for for long term strategies. Um, as for the the timeline, well, we we're just starting the work for uh, both measurement and uh, and tar target setting. What we want to do is to uh, issue uh, well to release a report um, on March twenty twenty two. Uh, so in like six or six or eight eight months now, um, and it's going to be open source because our we, we do not want it to be completely uh, just for <laughs> consultancies. Uh, so we want it to be as public and shared as possible. And I think one last uh, question, if it is okay to follow on, uh, the group uh, seems quite consolidated. But is it still possible to join the Net Zero Initiative? How does it work? And um, to ex maybe it would be nice to understand um, how the collaboration with the B Corp community that it's already engaged into could mm -hmm. Well, uh, it's certainly possible to, to join. Uh, so we have just started. So maybe we will need to make a catch up session to, uh, to make a debrief of everything we, we have said since uh, the beginning. But yeah, it's certainly possible to join. Um, well, on a very practical basis, joining means uh, contributing financially so we have different uh, prices depending on the on the size of the of the, the, the of the company and also to to attend some sessions some th methodological sessions um so that's it so if, if you want you can reach me directly um, by email and uh, and maybe make the link with the b corp or, or b lab so i'd be happy to uh, to give more more precisions Absolutely. And, and to my knowledge, the whole 80 page report is, is open source. The whole methodology is open source. So that's all available to, to everyone. Um, we have one question from um, Sasha from Microsoft. Do you want to ask your question, Sasha? Or I can ask it. Um, the question is, how as a low carbon project developer, can we educate our prospects on global neutrality without compromising a potential partnership? So I'm guessing this is kind of more on that communication line of, you know, these people were really hoping to be carbon neutral and now what do I sell to them? Mm -hmm. So I'm um, sorry, Sasha is from Microsoul. Yes. Is that, is, so the project developer in South America? Is, is that so? Because uh, if so, we, we are currently uh, discussing with uh, Microsoft on how to communicate with our clients on on carbon neutrality when you are a project developer, and so we are starting um, well sessions with different project developers, so Microsoft, but also uh, Pure Projet, uh, South Pole, um, uh, good, the Good Planet Foundation, and so on, to think together on a common message to give to all the companies that come to, uh, to project developers and want to offset all of their emissions, but without necessarily having a carbon reduction plan or anything. So this is exactly the purpose of our discussion that we're going to have, well, next week, actually. It's how, as a project developer, do I have a strong uh, message on carbon neutrality, how to educate my prospects and clients on global neutrality Without, um, well, without you know, um, intimidate, intimidating them on uh, on on purchasing carbon offsets, and the and the the answer that we have is that we keep talking about climate finance, 
we, we just think it's it, these are climate contributions that no climate offsetting and we think it's it's much more efficient actually and all of the french community of uh, project developers and uh, carbon offset operators are really using the net zero initiative framework to educate the prospects and to say it's great to contribute and you should in parallel have um, emissions reductions on the way thank you thank you very much yeah that's going to be um we'll definitely wait to hear about that because that was something that we talked about a lot in our in our french working group trying to figure out what's our new language around around our climate action if we're not seeking to be neutral for ourselves then what are we explaining so that's definitely a topic that, that comes up again and again are there any more questions And if no, then I want to take a moment to thank everybody who, who joined um, in. Oh, yeah. Excuse me. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can hear you. I've got a question to uh, people who are working in companies right now who might be cleaned of Carbon4 or any other consulting firms. Uh, my question is, uh, how do your company came to the point to be really um, well interested about the climate issue and not too much focus about the well the the economic race to make your company perform because I, I've got the feeling that a lot of people here are really enthusiastic about this issue but it sounds like we will do it if we've got time in mind and how I mean, is it a bottleneck that you have to be comfortable enough on your sector to care about this? Or is there many incentives uh, other than just being comfortable and caring about the issue to, to just try to fix some stuff about the climate issue and, and the carbon contribute, well, the, the carbon footprint of your company, try to optimize that and, and so on and so on. So I, I don't know if anybody else wants to answer this one. I, I can give you my personal opinion, Benjamin, about uh, what are the so what are the carrots? What's pushing us to do this? Well, I think it's just the fact that you know that our planet is on on fire. Um, we all know today that there are actually some impediments in the other direction. I don't know how many are aware of different lawsuits going on under the Energy Charter Treaty, but those are companies suing countries who pass laws to protect the environment, which then led to a loss of profit for their company, quite often in these cases, oil and gas drilling companies. Um, so, you know, the rules of the game are still monopoly. And um, some people are trying to do it differently because we believe that otherwise, you know, we won't survive. Um, but I'm not sure I'm aware of any other specific um, incentives other than, I mean, each country adapts things differently. In, in France, there are definitely some incentives to decarbonize. Um, you can receive special loans. You can receive the government will even pay for part of uh, some things that you might do to to reduce your emissions. Um, but I, I don't know if anybody else has anything to add on that. We're exactly at 5:30, so this is like you know sticking your finger in you know whew, a big uh, a big subject. Um, but it's it's you bring up a, a good point, which is what is what is pushing us to do this. <laughs> Anybody else have anything they want to share there? Well, I, I could add something, but I think the, the, the best would be to, to hear about uh, com the companies themselves uh, to, for, for this question. But from my, from my side as a consultant, I can see that, um, well, good and small and medium companies both are uh, quite um, well worried that uh, their talents go away or that their clients go away because of uh, well climate inaction or, or because they think the, the company has not tackled the, the problem enough. So of course, I'm not talking about all companies because lots of companies are in the gray zone. Um, they, are not, they are not green or do not have a green business model but they are not uh, uh, like brown and, uh, and participate in, in the fossil fuel um, kingdom that we all live in. So it's kind of hard because these companies in the gray zone uh, maybe have like harmless or 
harmless business models or business models that do not significantly contribute to climate change. But I think that the notion of keeping our clients and keeping the talents uh, in the in the company are are I think key motivators for them to to tackle and, and to to go through um, ambitious climate action plans. I would just add, perhaps, uh, especially in the EU context, that um, if uh, companies today, as we're having this discussion, are moving the needle into this discussion uh, regarding um, conviction, really they are convinced that this is the direction to go and there is an, a change needed into business and this change is connected to um, carbon reductions and really equalizing this balance. There is the regulator side. Uh, you see the European taxonomy over investments today. You see a lot of regulations coming into force and not just in, in Europe, uh, US as well, the stock market looking into it, requirements of ESG and transparency being more and more um, an obligation. So if you are dealing with more skeptical audiences, I think um, more than ever, you have uh, the argument that um, not taking an action today, it will mean larger investments in the future uh, by effectively having to move according to regulations. If you get into the whole risk discussion also, I mean, it's a, there's a ton, ton, ton of reasons Lots of people on this call are probably parents. I have five children myself. <laughs> so lots of reasons that motivate us here. Um, so I, I will wrap things up now. I wanna thank again, everybody who came to join us, to be with us, to participate, uh, to share, uh, to bravely and humbly uh, say, we don't know, but we're gonna try to find out together. Uh, that is a really, really important part of our movement. So uh, everybody give yourself a big, a big wave and a shout and a thank you for uh, doing this all together. And um, we look forward to passing on the uh, baton, as we say, to the Spanish for next month's climate talks. We look forward to it. Thank you, everyone. Please feel free to open up your mic and say goodbye. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a nice week. Bye bye.